And again, Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. Jesus took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and spitting touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephata, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened. His speech impediment was removed and he spoke plainly. Jesus ordered them not to tell anyone. But the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished. And they said, he has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The gospel of the Lord. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I am reminded one time uh, I was supposed to be the main speaker at a big dinner event. And you know how people are having their dinner. And the master of ceremonies uh, comes up to me and says, as the people were, were eating, he says, Father, you know, should we introduce you now to speak or let the people enjoy themselves a little while longer? <laughs> <laughs> But it's so wonderful to be here with all of you as we celebrate this Holy Eucharist. During my time visiting the inmates at Pelican Bay State Prison in Northern California, where I was a chaplain for three years, a volunteer chaplain there visiting the inmates, incarcerated most of them for life. In order to get to Pelican Bay, you didn't just have to kill somebody but out in the world, but you had to kill someone inside of the prison system. So this is a prison that also had the SHU, a very famous or infamous SHU, secure housing unit, where inmates were held in total isolation only allowed out for one hour of exercise a day. Think about this, no natural sunlight, pure psychological torture. This is now outlawed. The shoe is now outlawed as the rates of suicide and mental illness proved that this barbaric practice and the nature of this practice was horrible and detrimental to the mental health of these inmates. And it is there that I met in the SHU, the secure housing unit, a young man held in total isolation and through the bars of his cell in the shoe at Pelican Bay, he tells me as I visited him, everyone has given up on me, he says. Everyone has given up on me. Everyone, even my mother, he says, nobody visits me. I don't want to live anymore, he says. Everyone has given up on me. Nobody cares about me. I have no one. Everyone has given up on me. I looked at him and I said, 
not everyone. I'm here. I haven't given up on you. And I will never give up on you. I love you so much that I'm here. And he asks me, he says, will you continue to visit me? Of course I will, I said. And I put my hand through the bars of the cell there at Pelican Bay, which I wasn't supposed to do. And he touched my hand and began to cry. He says, Father Adam, no one has touched me in 12 years. Because he, he was there in Pelican Bay in the shoe. And we just both stood there at his cell and cried. You know, this is precisely how I feel right now, overwhelmed by each of you here today, who by your presence is letting me know that you haven't given up on me. Amen. So I'm very grateful. I feel that way right now because you are here. Yes, yes, Mama G. <laughs> and through you, each of you, I know that God hasn't given up on me. Even though I have been rendered and labeled as the untouchable by certain people, you shall not approach me for anything. <laughs> I feel like having that I've been, I have a scarlet letter, you know. <laughs> or, but you are here, and thank you for being here. Thank you for allowing me to experience God through each and every one of you. Thank you for not giving up on me. It is because of you that I know I will be okay. And I pray that through me, through my ministry, my gestures, my touch, my kiss. Mwah. I think I even have a. Um, no, I don't. Yeah, I do actually. <laughs> 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 my kiss. Mwah. My words that you will know too that you will be okay. Mm -hmm. Your family will be okay. Your marriage will be okay. Your health will be okay. No matter who may have placed a label on you. No matter what label may have been placed on you like divorced, slut, ugly, no good, stupid, dropout, failure, you know, you have a lot of people placing labels on you. The only label that counts, and now I'm in Bible country, the only label that counts is the label that God has placed on you. My beloved son or daughter with whom I am well pleased. Hear that today. Ephata, Jesus says to this mute and speechless Man, be opened. Receive the word today, that healing word, the bomb, the medicine for your soul to let you know how loved you are, how cherished you are, how beautiful you are, how good you are. You know, at each and every baptism, we do this. This precise thing that we just heard in the gospel is repeated at each and every baptism liturgy, the ephata, where we pray over and bless the ears of the baby or in the lips of the, of the baby or the person being baptized. And we say, be opened. We pray touching and anointing the person's ears and lips for them to be opened. And that's what I'm praying for each and every one of you and for myself today. And I know you're praying for this for me too, for our own ears and our lips to be opened for us to hear. You are my beloved child to stop believing the lies of the devil, the accuser, 
that tells you you are no good to believe that God is well pleased with you. That the same thing that happened at Jesus' baptism when the heaven was opened and God, his father, declared, you are my beloved son with you. I am well pleased. The same thing happened at your baptism and it hasn't been taken from you. Once you are baptized, you are baptized forever. You know, the prison psychiatrist, Dr. Diane Tomar, and you can Google her, who became a very close friend of mine. I also baptized her while I was in Crescent City. She said to me, Father Adam, you are their best medicine. You are the best psychotropic drug these prisoners could ever get. And I said to her, what do you mean? She says, you inject them with love. And that's what I do as best as I can every day, trying to inject all of you with lots and lots of love. Huh? Lots and lots of love. And that's what I'm calling you to do in your own life. Lots of love because we are all surrounded by people and voices that inject us with rejection and spew hate at us and make us feel less than. Mm? Reject them solid in your faith, the Bible says. You know, being born again isn't a one-time event. It's an ongoing process that when you fall, you are picked up again for love to find you. Like when you lose your job and someone extends their hand to you, that's love finding you. When you lose your husband or your wife and in a year or so you meet someone online, boom, mm, love has found you. You're born again. When you feel down and you can't go on and someone comes and picks you up and offers you unconditional acceptance, that's being born again. You know, that's what I've been experiencing these days. And that's what I'm experiencing right now with each one of you here whom I love so very much. Mm? And I want you to experience that too. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, I am convinced that the real pandemic around isn't the coronavirus. But the real pan, although the coronavirus is real, okay, but the real pandemic that we are all suffering from is the pandemic of people feeling unwanted, unloved, feeling like our life doesn't matter. We have a pandemic of low self-esteem. We suffer from a lack of dignity and we don't feel like we are good enough. We beat ourselves up and we believe the devil's lies that we amount to nothing, that nobody cares for us or loves us, that nobody wants us. We don't value ourselves because we don't recognize our inherent value as God's beloved sons and daughters made in God's image and likeness. Today's gospel that I just read to you is a perfect illustration painting for us the image of a suffering humanity being portrayed in this mute man. A man who cannot communicate with anyone. He has lost his ability to speak and to hear. No one can tell him how wonderful, how beautiful, how wanted, how cherished, how loved he is. And he cannot communicate what's inside of him either. He has to keep it all inside, boiling away and eating away at it. And it's killing him. And that's why Jesus says to him what? Efata. Mm? Because love is about being open. To open up. That's why I open myself up to all of you. And I invite you to do the same. Like I'm doing here with all of you. That's how it was in the beginning in heaven when God would stroll through the garden with Adam and they would talk and be in one another's presence. And Adam would hear how loved he was. There was communication between God and man. And this was lost through sin as it continues to be lost through sin today. 
And that is our number one task for ourselves as people, to recover that lost communication with God, to hear in you God telling us how much God loves us. That's why we come to Holy Mass, to experience that love. Jesus coming down here from heaven to be with us in his body and blood, to let us know that God is with us. And if God is with us, no one can be against us. In other words, feel that right now. I will be okay. Take that in. I want you to close your eyes and take that in with me right now. I will be okay. Mm. It's that experience of heaven every time we are here. Heaven coming down. That's what Jesus came to do, to bring heaven to us. And heaven is what? The best definition of heaven that I have found is heaven is community, people, what we are trying to, to make here, you know, at Divine Mercy Church. Community is heaven. Hell is isolation. You know, together we experience heaven. When we are alone, like in a prison cell, we experience hell. So this is heaven right now. Hmm? Community. So Jesus meets someone today who has lost his ability to communicate with God, to hear how beautiful he is, how wonderful he is, how loved he is. Alone, you can't tell yourself this. I mean, come on, are you going to record yourself and play it for yourself? No, you have to have somebody else tell you this, right? I need you to tell me, you know, that I look good. Yeah, okay. You know, and you need that too. You need... Okay, or that I smell good, you know, okay. I mean, we all need that. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm wearing this today, because my grandmother made this for me. Oh, wow. Yeah, when I was ordained. Uh -huh. Oh my goodness. She did it all by hand, isn't that? So it brings her presence to me. And every time she, te she tells me that when I call her every day, she says, I love you. Or when I get a text every day from Norma Jean that says, Remember, I love you. <laughs> we all need that. I mean, you know, we need people in our life. That's what church is. You need God to tell you this. And God tells you this through other people. That's why we need one another. That's why I need you and you need me. It's the only way to have heaven on earth. Huh? The same thing Jesus did with this mute man. And notice he doesn't have a name. Why doesn't he have a name? I mean, if you read the Bible, people have names. Why doesn't this guy have a name? Did you ask yourself that question? Do you know why he is nameless? Because he is you and me. Hmm? This guy is me and you. You get it? Huh? Jesus wants to do with us today the same thing. What did he do to the guy? He places his fingers in his ears and then takes his spit and puts it on his tongue. Did you, you know, that's saliva, huh? On the man's tongue. Those are intimate gestures, aren't they? Did you ask yourself that? Unheard of for those days. You couldn't get near a sick person because you would catch it. Huh? And Jesus not only gets close to him, but he puts his finger in his ears and, and puts the saliva on his tongue. What does he do? Mwah. He's kissing him. You get it? Exchanging saliva, you know something about that? You know, okay, all you married folks, you got, you exchange saliva, don't you? No? no? Huh? That's what he's doing to him. He's exchanging saliva with him when he's kissing him. Huh? The Bible is saying here that Jesus kissed him and the same thing he wants us to experience in our life. He kissed him. His saliva touching the man's saliva. Gestures reserved for the very intimate ways of allowing someone to experience love, intimacy. The man can't speak or hear, so Jesus touches him and kisses him and looks at him. And then Jesus looks up to heaven, pointing the man to God and says what? Ephata, be opened. Allow yourself to be kissed, in other words. Mwah. Mm -hmm. Kissed by God through other people. That's why I love all of you kissing me. Okay. <laughs> I hope you all uh, 
Never mind, I won't go there. <laughs> you know? We all need that. We allow ourselves to heaven to be brought to us. So allow me to bring heaven to you. That's my main task as a priest. And then Jesus says here, be opened. And the Bible says, he has done all things well. That's the phrase from the book of Genesis when God was creating the world. And looked at man after he created him and said, he is very good. Remember, after God made everything, he says it's good. But when he made the human being, God said, he's very good. Hmm? Jesus is here to allow you to hear these words. You are very good. There's nothing wrong with you. Hmm? You are not the untouchable. Hmm? God hasn't given up on you and never will. Because I haven't given up on you. And I know that... God hasn't given up on me because you haven't given up on me. So, Evata. That's the homily for today. Be open. That's the love. That's the best definition of love. Openness. Hear how much I love you, says God today. Hear how good you are. Hear how cherished you are. Hear that all will be well. Experience the freedom of hearing God say, you are very good. Mm -hmm. You know, all of you, you know the best soup that I like? Is Campbell's. You, you are all, and me too, you know, we're all, you are, all of you are like Campbell's. Mm-mm, good. <laughs> That's what we need to experience. Let this be the moment now when maybe you are feeling like this young man in that prison cell at shoe that I met, in the shoe. You know, what prison cell do you find yourself in? Let me be the vehicle, the way, the Holy Spirit coming down upon you today to say, someone's got your back. I'm here for you. You are not alone. You will make it. Everything is gonna be okay. You will be okay. Let my words today come to you to let you know what that young man needed to hear. I haven't given up on you, and I will never give up on you. Hear that, I love you, and you are 